Okay, so the question was that some people uh, would think that the mantle is liquid. Uh, what we know about the structure of our planet, we all know this from geophysics, we know this from geophysical investigations for the most part, we're talking about seismic waves. So what happens when we have an earthquake, it sets off an immense amount of seismic energy. And that seismic energy travels to our entire planet. Those are very strong seismic waves. And the two principal types of waves, one are compressional waves. They compress and expand, compress and expand the material, just like the sound waves do. And the second type of waves are shear waves. They move perpendicular to the wave movement and they have a shear movement. And so these two principal type of waves are set off by any earthquake and some of them are humongous. And so let's assume we have an earthquake, that wave travels to the entire planet and arrives anywhere on, on the planet. Now, if we have an earth that is homogeneous, that has no layered structure inside, those waves would come through and would come through and would come through and you would have an arrival of waves all over the sphere. That's not what's happening. What's happening is those waves are refracted and reflected at different surfaces within, within the Earth. The compressional waves, we call them also the, the P waves, the primary waves, they travel really fast, about twice the speed as the, as the shear waves. And they travel through any medium. They travel through liquids to solids and through gases. And so they arrive anywhere. The shear waves, you cannot shear a liquid. You cannot shear a liquid. What that means is the shear waves, once they hit a liquid, they do not propagate through liquids. The shear wave is a force like that. And when you do this to water or to any other liquid or to air, you cannot shear it. Okay? So the velocity of shear waves in any liquids is zero. So they just simply get absorbed. Okay? And so when waves travel through our planet, if you look at shear waves, the S waves that move this way, they do not arrive at the opposite end of an earthquake. So there is a liquid down there, we know that. Okay. So they travel down and then they get absorbed. But the neighboring wave, they make it. So some of the shear waves, they make it like this and they arrive here. And they arrive at a 103 degree angle away from the origin of that wave. Okay, from that, we can calculate the distance to that, to that sphere inside that's liquid. We know there is a liquid sphere inside, and that's our outer core, okay? And we can, we can make easy calculations. That's about 2,900 kilometers down from, from where we are, okay? So that's where the mantle core boundary is, okay? So that's where that is. What would also happens is the S waves, they travel through that entire mantle. Okay, so from that we know that the mantle is solid because else they would not travel through that. Okay. We also know that the inner part of our core is solid because we get S waves that travel through the inner part of our core. And that's amazing because they get first absorbed and then they show back up. And that's because the P waves travel through it. And when a P wave P wave hits a physical boundary, they, it's called wave conversion. Some of the P wave energy is transmitted into an S wave again. Okay. So basically from, from looking at um, hundreds and thousands of earthquakes, we know exactly the structure of our planet. We know the velocity with which waves travel through the different layers of our crust and of our mantle and of our core. And we, not only do we have um, <coughs> seismic energy that totally proves that there is no liquid in the mantle, uh, but we also have samples of the mantle, samples of the mantle, and here is one. This is called a mantle peridotite. It consists of magnesium iron silicate, and it's very heavy material, okay? And the seismic velocity of this material coincides with, with what we know from earthquake energy. Okay? And these samples, 
They're not really all that rare because volcanoes bring them up from the mantle all the time. So this is sort of undigested mantle that hasn't been melted in, in volcanoes. Okay? So we have samples of it and it's crystalline. It has large crystals in it, which means it cooled very, very slowly. And this is a result of the initial differentiation of our planet in the early days of our planet, like 4.6 to 4.5, 4.3 billion years ago. Differentiation was the first process that happened by gravitational forces. The really heavy material, the nickel and iron, gravitated towards the center of the planet. And then the lighter layers, like the mantle, makes up the, the next big shelf. And then we have on the very top, very thin, the lightest materials of all, and that is the crust. Okay, and here's a part of the crust, of the Earth's crust, as typical, typical composition of a granite. Okay, so that's, that's how that looks like. Of course, we don't have a sample of the uh, liquid, <laughs> of the liquid core or of the solid part of the core, but we have materials that are sort of an analog to that, and those are meteorites. These are nickel iron meteorites, and these meteorites, they have about that composition and they are, and so all these um, lead us to, to um, knowing that the core is made out of, um, out of uh, nickel iron. And so there is no doubt the mantle is solid and there is no doubt that we know what it is. We do have samples and we do um, know from the seismic wave propagation of S waves that they travel through it with the speed that they should travel through it and so all this there's no dispute about it the the mantle itself the earth is extremely hot okay so the earth is extremely hot and we know that the plates are moving plate tectonics plates are moving and, and they're moving by heat convection very slowly with about let's say you know an inch to two to three inches per year that's about the mo motion. It's like a boiling soup, a very slowly boiling soup. And um, so it's basically a big, huge convection cell. That's how the, and so there is some plastic movement in it because of the heat. And that heat comes from radioactive decay of, uh, of uh, uranium, thorium, lo very long-lived radioactive elements. The short-lived ones have have ceased to exist for a long time now, so, but we have a huge amount of heat left and heat is really what drives our planet. Heat is what drives our, drives everything. Without that radioactive decay, we wouldn't have a magnetic field, we wouldn't have plate tectonics, we probably wouldn't have an atmosphere to live in. I got my PhD in Germany. I graduated from one of the oldest universities, not only in Germany, but in the world. Uh, University of Tübingen and um, from there I had a postdoc appointment at the University of Michigan. I stayed there for three years doing basic research, fundamental research actually in the magnetic field and uh, then I worked for nine years at the ocean drilling program at Texas A&M University before I came here and I've been here at UL for 13 years and I'm a professor of geology.